I'm Billy Kirkwood for Insane Championship Wrestling and welcome to this very special presentation. It's called How I Won the Square Go and I am joined by the winner of the 2019 Square Go. There it is right there, the Square Go itself. In that is a contract that can be cashed in for a shot at any title for Insane Championship Wrestling. I'm joined by the winner of course, Ruda Lightning. Thank you very much for joining me. Now this is a unique one, because we've never had an opportunity to sit down with anyone this one the square goal, let alone a two-time winner. So, 2012 was the first time you won this. Long time ago, yeah. Long time ago, long time ago. And here we are, 2019. It's happening again. Yeah. Don't call it a comeback. Because you never... How, how does that feel? Because it really set the wrestling world alight. Because, with all due respect, you are one of the first names in there. Did you see this happening? Because a lot of people had discounted you out of this. I had a game plan. Um, as you say, I've won it before. Mm. Uh, a lot's changed since then. But I kind of knew roughly how I was going to go, how things were going to go, what I had to do, things not to do. Mm. Um, so I really had to execute that from the start and... I managed it, so... Do you think all the years of sort of experience, because obviously you'd gone from wrestling, you picked up the shoulder injury, you, you were working as an agent for some of the biggest names in ICW's history, some of the biggest names in UK wrestling. So you've got to sit there and build a master plan and just execute that on the night went, because at one point, you didn't think you were you were coming back to pro wrestling. No. At uh, all, and as an active ring ring competitor, then last year, much to a, a, a massive shock, you came back to pro wrestling. I would like to think over the last four or five years I've been able to take a little something away mm. from everybody that I've worked with. Okay. Um, Drew Galloway, Jack Jester, Wolfgang, Joe Coffey, Bram, Kenny, Yeston, everybody. Yeah. Uh, I've learned a lot from them um, and I, I've had the opportunity to sit back and watch everything that's going on round about. If it is at all possible, I've managed to become better in that time, having not wrestled at all. The proof's in the pudding. If, if you watch four or five years ago, mm. something that I might have done in the ring compared to what I do now, it is better. And I, I don't know how that's happened. I guess it is just literally having been able to sit back, relax for all that time, and just take it all in. You've got to understand as well, these guys at ICW shows, they work hard. Mm. It's a long day for everybody. But I've been able to sit that whole time. I've been able to watch every second of every match on every show for that whole time. And I have done that. And it's something that not a lot of other guys or girls on the roster have got the opportunity to do on a show day and I guess I learned so much from basically everybody else watching what they were doing. So all the success Red Lightning had back in 2012, would you say that Rudo is almost smarter, more travelled now? You've you've learned the story, you've you've, you've written the story. Yeah. You think he's Rudo, so if Rudo and Red Lightning were ever to, they don't really exist in the same plane anymore because you've evolved. I would just, I would destroy the Red Lightning. <laughs> won the first square goal there you go. it's um, a dream not match. only because I'm five stone heavier <laughs> but uh, as a, I think I've learned a lot about wrestling as a business and matches and performing and training and, and, and all that kind of stuff at, with, with GPWA and even learning a lot hmm. from teaching other people and constantly repeating certain things and certain traits and, and, and that's kind of how I've ended up where I am now. Alright, well here we are, it's turned the wrestling world of ICW on its head. We are getting to do a very special masterclass almost here with Professor Rudo, How I Won the Square Goal. Let's take your journey through this year's. First of all, kicking it off, it's number one and number two, mm -hmm. Liam Thompson and Rudo Lightning. All right, here we are, kicking off the 2019 ICW Square Go. We've got ourselves two ICW's originals, Liam Thompson and Rudo Lightning. 
Liam was the clear favourite. Obviously, I'm standing kind of behind as well, waiting to go. Um, they, were, they were really rooting for him. The situation is as itself. I was kind of actively hoping that I was going to be in there early uh, for my own journey throughout the match, but also it, it was it was good to get a chance to shake Liam's hand and, and, and at the start in front of everyone. Yeah. Um, it, there was a point in time where we, we both kind of followed similar journeys. Like Liam had been injured as well and wasn't again wasn't sure when this was going to going to be better for him if at all. Similar situation to myself and you can, you know you can write this that in 2019. The first two guys in the square goal were him and I, um, and it, especially as well, both coming in as, as hot favourites. Because people don't realise this, the numbers are drawn totally at random earlier on during the day, before people get to come through the curtain, they keep it apart, so there's only literally 15 seconds before you know who's yeah. coming out in front of you. What went through your mind as soon as you realised it was Liam? Are you, are you excited to the idea? I, I didn't realise that his sink was a weapon. <laughs> right. I, I, he always takes his sink everywhere. But yeah, I guess I just had a little shake of hand and said to him, it's good that we've got to do this tonight and whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Um, I'm obviously fired up. I, I, I can't, I mean, at this point, I can't believe this is happening. Right. Like, this is a sold out square go now. And I'm out there wrestling, not with a suit on, sitting at commentary beside yeah. yourself, what I have been for so long. Yeah. It's, this is a match, and, and, and potentially a long one at this point. Well, that's it. It's, it's a test, isn't it? Because at this point you're going through your head, one way or another, I've got an hour. There's an hour before I'm getting anywhere near winning this. Yeah. So it's it's really is a marathon, it's not a sprint. There's a lot of guys to come. And, uh, the one thing I would say in hindsight is that the two minutes is a long time. Oh, really? Like, two minutes doesn't sound like a long time, but it really is. I mean, I, I, I remember seeing Liam a bit later in the match, and actually, by this point, we were kind of, I suppose, looking out for one another to a degree, and I actually said to him, you know, well, we get another 45 minutes to go here if we're, we're going to stay in here till the end. Um, we were at number 15 and even by that point you've, you've been out there 35, 40 minutes and you're only halfway through so I think both of us at this point we know that we need to conserve a bit of energy there's no point in going in there going bang 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 the, the objective is to of course put your opponent over the top rope we are trying to do that but I think we both know as well that we can't go full on here. We've got to really pay, like, just take your time. Somebody else is coming, you know, like, it's not. You do one silly thing in a square go, and we saw that throughout the the night. On on the night, if you do one silly thing, you turn your back for one second and over that top rope, and you're done. So you need to be very cautious of where you are in the ring at all times and, um, and making sure that. So you guys, here we are, we're kicking off the match, it's a long way to go, but you, neither of you is holding back. Yeah. This is like, because you know that he is a, a favourite seed in this, he knows that you're a favourite seed in this, he knows how, he knows the, 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 the mind games, the psychology, everything that you bring to this. So Liam is very aware of that, even though you've only returned to wrestling at this point, what, four, four or five months yeah. earlier actively. But things are about to take a big turn in this match, because you guys are wrestling, you're opening the show, but things are about to change because two men are going to be coming to the ring that know you not just as Rudolph Lightning, know you as Coach Rudolph, Leighton Buzzard and Ravy Davey from GPWA. Hmm. So everything changes at this point because this is the only time these two, I mean, they've, they've shown the respect. I remember when you were talking to them in the ring when Mar Dallas was there, he may be your boss one Sunday a month or whatever, but I am your coach. They'd never cross the line. It's one of the oldest rules in professional wrestling yeah but this is and no pun intended a square goal you see him here i mean he's 
already trying to do things that I taught him. Taking his time, not going in there right away. I mean, we're already 30 seconds in here. Um, I, 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 listen, I don't, I'm not surprised that I was in number two and Leighton was in number three and Davy was in number four. I mean, we expected that to happen. Okay. Um, I, I don't. Mark Dallas particularly would have been keen to give me as difficult a night as possible and Liam and I are you know, on the same page as Leighton was coming to the ring I said to Liam look we can get back to this later let's get rid of this guy here and, uh, you're, and you're, you're both clearly having dare I suggest a little bit of fun as well yeah I mean he's nearly out already there but Leighton taking nothing away from him is one of the most exciting prospects to come along so as much as he may be then there as a threat of soldier Mar Dallas the, the, the young guy's a genuine threat at this point and things are about to get a little more threatening yeah because any second now his tag partner stable mate I'm not sure what exactly we'd call him this alternative roster that Mar Dallas is building Ravy Davies gonna hit the ring any minute and then it's it's two on two yeah and then um, I for me, this this really part of the match was more. Or less, I mean, we we had divers in next. It was a long time before Liam and I were had any kind of help in terms of evening up the numbers a bit. I I feel I fully expected to be in one or two the whole time. I, I mean, who draws this? You know. Seemingly, we're, yeah. we're, we're told it is at random, but it's not how random. random can it be? And yeah, so the sink, the sink just happens to be there for Davy. You know, we'll send Liam in with the sink. You know, I, I think it's, and then these two now, they're just, I'm understandably knackered. This we're is going the two minutes of, of fighting Liam over the rope to getting two minutes of fighting late, and then now it's just. So this is the plan, this is the game plan all along. This is where you almost switch into survival mode because you know these guys have been sent out to take you out. Almost yeah. a, an orchestrated hit in the ring almost. Yeah. Liam's down and out, so it's you and these two exciting, dangerous young men. Yeah. And they are relishing the opportunity to finally get a chance to physically exert themselves with you. Yeah, and Liam's... Liam's no longer an option. Um, I think, but but this in this kind of scenario happened for me throughout the match as well. There's also an opportunity to you know, play dead, so to speak. Okay. If, at the end of the day, if I'm down on that floor like that now, which I was for quite a lot of the match, I can't I can't get put out the match from there. You've got to get me up, so get he, me over the top rope, and I've got to hit the floor. I'm 16 stone, thereabouts, so, you know, no offence to Leighton, but there's no, absolutely no way he was going to be able to pick me off that floor. So I just stay. I, I, I had no, like you say, survival mode, I had no choice but to just curl up and take it, and hope to God that someday was coming. All right, Renault, you're playing the long game at this point. You're surviving the best you can. Then the one-man purge, Jimmy Havoc, comes into the ring for the square goal. What are you thinking when you look up at him swinging a chair at everything moving? Well, I'm taking a breather, to be quite honest. I'm not going to put myself in a situation where Jimmy Havoc's going to hit me with a chair. So I'm happy to just uh, sit in the corner. Chair's out the hand now. Jimmy and I have got a bit of previous... So I thought it was maybe just time to just say a wee hello to Jimmy. Um, Yeston and Kenny. So it looks like you finally got some backup. It's the reunion of the Rudo Sports Entertainment brand. Yeston and Kenny backing up Rudo. So we thought. They sent me flying. So your mind's going through a steel chair, but what's going through your mind at this point? Uh, See the end of the day, if Kenny and Yeston, they done that to me first, if they never done that to me, I would have done that to them. 
to be quite honest. And there's only one winner. So what would have happened if me, Kenny and Yeston were the final three? So I wasn't going to step over the top well, for them. So you, it's the sword that you live by and the sword that you die by. If you know, if they never, they never done that to me, I'd have done the same to them. So, but it's the thanks for, the, thanks for the ride, guys. <laughs> there we go. Onward and upward. Okay, so here we are in the closing moments of the square goal. The ring is filling up with bodies of favourites. We have got Andy Wilde, we have got Viper, we've got yourself, we've got Wolfgang, and we've got a kinky party, and there's no friends in a square goal. Well, you say that, but uh, and this was part of my um, overall sort of plan. Certain people that I just need to stay away from in this match. Mark Coffey was in earlier. He was like a house in fire. I'm not going to put myself in that situation. If I can stay out the way, then I'm going to do that every single time. Kinky party, some slight previous for them, I suppose, uh, separately and individually. Uh, they were too busy drinking beer. You, you're lit literally everyone is getting a rest watching I this. I just gave Wolfie a tap and said to him, "Do you fancy this?" And he's went, "Yeah." Operation Red Wolf. One more time. There we go. And they're out. Two of the, another two of the favourites gone, so you're yeah. picking them off. Slowly but surely. You can't get too wound up in the moment, I think, here. We got too hit we get too caught up in that moment. And there's always somebody waiting. Um Echo got on Wolfie quite quick and Kez and I got into something and then they ended up getting back into a chair. But again that probably gave me the opportunity to as I say play dead for another while I was able to stay down there for pretty much most of the rest of the match um, and I, people like Gray, I mean, Grado here um, we saw Jeff Jarrett coming in these guys were far too engrossed with each other now a lot of these guys in this ring are far too engrossed with each other to even realise that I'm there are, are you aware when you hear the Simon announcing? Are you aware this is number twenty-eight? Are you counting? No, I don't have a clue. So, but you you know the ring's filling up. You know it's yeah. We're now going down the end. I'm just gonna yeah. make it. I'm just gonna make it to the yeah. end. When you look at who's left, a lot of the guys have got kind of individual things going on with each other, and something that I told myself before we went in: don't let your grievances with other people get involved in this match because. Like someday, someday will be, someday will be waiting for you. Um, a lot, of, probably a few guys and girls out the match. Viper had a good showing in the match. Probably more interested in getting their hands on a certain person, um, and maybe not thinking about winning. And that was their downfall. Okay, here we are in the final moments of the match. It is unbelievable. We've got two of our favourites, two wild cards, and a prestigious entry into this. We have Wolfgang, we have Liam Thompson, we have Andy Wilde, we have Red Lightning, and of course we've got Joe Hendry. This is it. You're at the end of the marathon. The tank's going to run on empty. Talk us through what's happening. I mean, I'm turning round. I, I just I see Andy Wilde coming towards me. Um, we're all kind of just coming round now, but if you watch what happens here, and it was just a moment of I need to do. So he's coming, Wolfgang. Credit to him. He's he's helping me out here. Andy, Andy's too focused on me, but then Wolfie's too focused on Andy, and actually we can push him out. He's 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 not watching. There's a lot of carry on here now. I'm gone. I'm gone. But I, I call on the action at ringside. I'm away. I'm not. We're taking our eye off you. There's, there's you. You've been you've been playing this survival game so long, but you're it's like hidden in plain sight. Yeah. So here we are in this moment, and it's everyone thinks this is the final two. Yeah. This is the final two. Third, Liam third. Thompson and Joe Hendry. I think even Liam and Joe. Yeah. Think this is it. For all intents and purposes. These guys don't know what happened to me. They were too busy getting involved in their own carry-on at the end there. And 
I'm gone. Now, I've done a walk around to the venue before the show. I knew exactly where to be. I, I, I can see what's happening on that screen. So, I'm just watching now. So you are down, hidden at the side of the apron. Or the side I'm under of the, the ring. ring. I'm underneath and I'm looking at that. I'm watching it all happen. So I, I know what's happening now. Because even our security team, even our officials at ringside, are paying attention to what's going on in the ring. Don't get me wrong, there was some people at that side of the ring that could see me. But, and there was a bit of a, a riddle chant started, but most people forgot about it. Because um, obviously these two guys are going hell for leather trying to win this match, but they don't realise what's going on, so... Joe Henry's pretty fresh, I mean he's come out at number 30 there, Liam came in at number 1, so... Liam's been in there a whole hour more than Joe at this point as well, so, so Joe's based on that alone clear favourite. So here we are, they are on a precarious position, both in the ropes. One of these guys is going over. Look at this! No, 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 they're battling right on the outside. Both men on the ring apron. You talk about dangerous. I'm going to get an update here of the eliminations that have already taken place. They're going to be coming our way any second if you're fans. So you're going to run you through what a night it's been already. And they are battling. I mean, that's that's a whisker. Scrambling, scrambling. Test those steps, test those people, steps. And people don't appreciate that. It's like, what? They are, they are fighting, what, eight, nine inches? It's, it's really not that big an area yeah this can be slippy as well so you're just waiting I'm waiting on your moment but that one wasn't the right one you know what I would have felt bad for Liam you know we, we started the match together and we kind of looked out for each other a bit through the match. There were points where we, you know, we're all trying to win the match at the end of the day. But I'm glad that things kind of went the way that they did. Well, Liam's going to be exhausted at this point, but he has thrown everything he can. But it's just not enough for the fresh Joe Hendry. So is it frustrating for you at this point? Are you just going, hurry up and finish this? Give me that window. The longer I'm under there, I've been on my feet for an hour or I've been wrestling for an hour and 10 minutes by this point and now I'm lying down. So, um, which going from that to, to lying down is, when I came out eventually I, I, I felt very dizzy. Right. Who are you thinking of? Like, it's going to be one of these two guys. It's yeah. going to be one of these two guys that you're going to have to face in the final moments. Do you have a preference? Well, it would be bittersweet for me for it to be Joe. Um, Dallas was tipping Joe as the face of the company and the, the, the square goal winner. Oh, the square goal winner. And I, I didn't believe that. I didn't believe that Joe Henry was going to win the square goal. When you look at the heart of Liam as well, um, you know it was going to, always going to be difficult for Joe going in there as a the favourite. The target he's back, but of course, um, doesn't surprise me that Joe entered number thirty either. So, it, I, like I say, I'd have felt bad for Liam had I had to have did that to him because because ultimately I would have. Yeah, but. Both men again we both men again exhausted. Yeah. Boom. And then, you know, somebody else has come to do the dirty work because that's what happens and But that's it, even these guys. Even these guys. Boom. Now that's my turn now, that's my time. 
he's getting the case, he thinks he's won. Because the celebration okay. starts too early. I'm very dizzy here. I, like, I, I don't know how I managed to stay in my feet. I'll take that, thank you. And there's Dallas at the top of the ramp. Straight up, right in his face. Told you. I told you I was going to do this. Just, I, I can't believe at this point that this has happened. This is a being dizzy, I suppose it was just being dizzy, taking a dizzy turn, being lying down, getting up quick, but it was an out of body experience to the moment that I came out under the ring, into the ring to get Joe out, the whole thing felt like an out of body experience, I felt like I wasn't there. So the plan has happened, everything, all the pieces, as much as it might have been a scramble at times, it might have been unpredictable, you reach the final line and you've now got that right there. Yeah. You've got the square goal cash in opportunity. And, and I mean, have you ever seen this in your life? <laughs> I'm going through the crowd. A lap of honour. I've never seen that before at ICW. But from me of all people, like it's something that's. It was a nice moment. Um, but I knew that was going to happen. I just I, I had a feeling that I had mapped this out in such a way that I was going to be able to maximise my chance of winning this match. And as much as there's elation, it's just, there's, there's almost a mix in some people's feet. They, they, just, don't know. they just can't process. Even Mark Dallas here has gone from, I have my square goal winner, to just having taken away. Yeah. No, it, it just struggling to, even Joe Hendry is angry. Yeah. I don't think he even understands. It's not, I mean, it's, it's nobody's fault. And it, it was nice to put my arm around Liam an hour and a half later and say, you know, un unlucky. Um, you were unlucky. But at the end of the day, at least we didn't have Joe Henry as a square goal winner. And the landscape of high CW going forward could have been very, very different had that happened and Joe did win. Um, uh, it's still as big, I mean, it'll be probably that, I, I can't think, well, I can't think of a career moment like bigger than that, because you've got to understand, in 2012, when the first time I won the square goal, this happened in the Classic Grand, in front of like 200 people, that's a sold out SWG3, and as big a part as I've been in the company, in that time, I've never really had a moment like that, like a wrestling moment where, you know, something like that happened and over the moon and, you know, it's only just beginning really. Alright, well we've been here before, well you've been here before, the winner of the 2012-2019 square goal, you have this, uh -huh. that comes with, the winner goes to spoils, you have this opportunity to cash in, but you also know that there is a target painted on. You've been here before. You're, as a marked man, you've got a loaded gun right here. You're a marked man. What's next? I need to think about what is best for me. Um, some things I've never done. There's some things that I've done already. And it's an accolade. But there's also the issue of Mark Dallas, Joe Henry, Davey, Leighton Buzzard, Kez, like, like you say. The, I don't think I've heard the last for them. So, listen, I've got this briefcase and I can cash in whenever or whoever I want. Um, I think over time it'll be become a bit clearer, but for now, you know, we're taking one day at a time and Taking it easy and uh, really sort of just absorbing this victory, uh, which is just different for me, you know. Yeah. Well, it's not going to be too long before we're going to see what's happening. What a way to kick off 2019 with winning the square goal opportunity. You said it best. The landscape of ICW changed in an instant. Don't forget, you can check out the square goal in its entirety and lots of moments from Rudo's career. Make sure to check him out on social media as well so you can go along with his journey and follow us on ICW's social media. I've been Billy Kirkwood for ICW and this was How to Win the Square Goal.
Thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll see you again.